Welcome to AB Circus. What makes an acrobat a circus acrobat? It's a good question because acrobatics are everywhere. You can see acrobatics in sports, particularly gymnastics, in dance, and really in any activity that involves throwing your whole body through space. It seems like they're rooted in our very DNA as human beings, which shouldn't be surprising given our lineage. If you've watched our other episodes, then you know the series is about circus history and circus acts. So our job today is to define circus acrobatics, particularly the form of acrobatics that take place on the ground in the circus, floor acrobatics. And we're going to do it in this episode of AB Circus, the inside history of floor acrobatics. We promise you'll flip. <laughs> Sorry. If you've seen our episode about the history of the circus, and if you haven't, you should, then you remember that archaeological evidence from the ancient Minoan civilization. It shows that acrobats jumped over bulls in religious rituals about 4,000 years ago. So from the beginning of Western civilization, acrobatics were seen as a symbol of our ability to surpass ourselves. Either that, or there were a bunch of Minoans who really, really did not want to get run over by wild bulls. There's evidence of acrobatics going way back in the east as well, to the Western Han Dynasty, around 220 BC. Since then, all over the world, acrobats have entertained humankind from the courts of kings to people in the street, with incredible feats of strength and agility. Floor acrobatics have been part of the modern circus since it was founded in the 18th century. Over the centuries, it became an Eastern European specialty that was a lot about demonstrating strength. And it's still true today. You wouldn't want to mess with our East European athletes, believe me. The world of the circus was turned upside down in the 1970s when the Peking Circus first appeared in the West. Chinese acrobatics emphasized lightness over strength and brought humor into the mix. So, yes, our acrobats are pretty badass, but it's okay to laugh at them. When Cirque du Soleil was formed, all of that became part of how we present floor acrobatics. And another thing. We were also the first company to present international level gymnastics competitors, bringing the art to a whole other level. So what, you're asking after all this, are circus floor acrobatics? If you've ever seen a circ show, and we certainly hope you have, then you've seen all of these disciplines. The bonkine is an acrobatic discipline performed on the ground by two carriers who using their arms catapult a flyer into the air to perform acrobatic leaps. The flyer then lands on A, the ground, or B, the intertwined fingers of the carriers called a banquette. Ouch! Sensitive fingers need not apply. The flyer can also land on the banquette formed by the hands of a second carrier team. Yes, the Russian bar was introduced by a Russian. In this case, a man called Boris Isyadi in 1958. Standing on the ground, two carriers hold a flexible bar on their shoulders or their arms. A flyer stands upright on the bar and springs from it to perform various acrobatic moves. And no, shoulder pads are not allowed. Contortion has existed for thousands of years to traveling shows in Europe and the circus arts of Asia. Contortionists demonstrate extreme flexibility in three categories, backbending, forebending, and dislocation. They're also great at twister. Chinese hoops diving, as you can imagine, originated in China. A set of wooden and metal hoops of varying diameters are balanced on top of one another from the ground up. Acrobats propel themselves through the hoops, performing various moves. The acrobatic chair can involve one or many solid chairs. Artists balance and do acrobatic moves on the chair. The chair pyramid is a discipline in which chairs are stacked and acrobats perform on the top of the structure. This discipline involves acrobatics and something called antipodism, a fancy word for lying on your back and juggling with your feet. See? You can learn something new every day. Like this word, a trinka, or low sloping chair. In the Icarian games, a juggler or carrier lies on a trinka and propels another acrobat, the flyer, through space. The flyer performs balancing tricks and risky jumps. It gets even more fun when a second team of carriers and flyers joins in, executing even more hazardous tricks and passing flyers back and forth like they were beach balls. Yes, the more the merrier, we all say. Hand-to-hand -hand is a demanding discipline performed by two or more acrobats. One acrobat, called a carrier, performs a series of moves involving strength, 
balance, elevation, and flexibility while carrying another acrobat called a flyer by the hands and sometimes even the head. No feet involved in this one. Static hand-to-hand -hand is performed in a smaller space and is intended to show off mostly strength and balance. The performers typically move slowly. Dynamic hand-to-hand -hand involves bigger movements over a greater area, with the carrier propelling the flyer with his arms. Dynamic hand-to-hand -hand performances can also include other acrobats performing in complement to the carrier and the flyer. Hand-to-hand -hand doesn't usually involve high fives, but these artists certainly deserve one. The Chinese pole act originates in Asia and consists of several three to nine meter poles. Artists perform up and down the pole and move from pole to pole. The swinging pole is a version of the Chinese pole that you guessed it swings around because it's suspended by cables 60 centimeters in the air instead of being fixed to the ground. It allows acrobats to perform more dynamic and diverse moves. If you've got a backyard and a 10 year old, you probably own a trampoline. Remember, they must be used with supervision and no flipping. The trampoline first made an appearance in the circus in the 20th century. Trampolines allow everyone from backyard flyers to circus acrobats to get higher into the air and perform crazy moves. The teeter board is a teeter-totter on steroids. It's a collective number in which one or two jumpers jump onto a rocking board from the top of a pedestal to catapult flyers into the air. The flyers perform acrobatics in the air before landing onto the jumper's shoulders or a perch or a chair. This is the specialty of the badass East European acrobats we're talking about. Now remember, even though people do fly through the air in these disciplines, they are still considered part of the floor acrobatics family. Once you leave the floor for longer periods, say on a trapeze or on hoops, you're practicing aerial acrobatics. But that's part of another episode that you can see by clicking on another video. What makes them special at Cirque du Soleil is that we're constantly bringing in new equipment or techniques to push acrobatics further and make these circus floor acrobatics the best you've ever seen. We've come a long way from jumping over bulls and a long way from our venerable ancestors, but we're sure we haven't reached the limits of how far we can push this noble art. But enough talk. Mesdames et messieurs, on with the show. <laughs>